All right, good, good, good. So we just got done going over my pack. If you didn't see that video, check out at the end of this video, I'll put a link to it, everything that's in my backpack. But now I'm gonna show you what's in the dog's backpack and some stuff I've learned. So first off, you can see these two are ramped up and ready to go. All right, you guys gotta go somewhere else. Go, out of what? Get each of those dogs, Ida and Hawk, weigh right at 50 pounds. And kind of the rule of thumb for dogs of this size is you don't want to go above 20% of their body weight uh, for a backpack. You don't want them carrying a load above 20% of their body weight. So that means in terms of these guys that they can't carry a pack heavier than 10 pounds. And the truth is it's Hawk because he's not as sturdy built as what I did the lab is. He's certainly a fast mover, but he's not really um, built for being a pack animal. Uh, I want to keep his load even less. And last year, what I found out, I'm going to show you, I broke into some different packs last year thinking I'd try something new um, that mirrored my backpack, um, and it was a bad idea. Here's a picture of those. And the reason it was a bad idea is because if you look at those packs, they have straps on the outside. And what I found out as we hiked in, Hawk was wearing a pack and he disappeared for a long time. What ended up happening is, is one of those packs got caught on something. Uh, the outside strap, one of the loops, got caught on something and Hawk, had to wrestle his way out of it. When he got back to us, which was probably a 20 minute gap between when we lost last song and when he came back, um, the whole one side of the pack had been basically torn apart. Uh, the zipper was open, uh, which means that two and a half days of food disappeared, his food bowl disappeared. Um, yeah, so not a good idea to have uh, any kind of loops or extraneous straps on the outside of a dog pack. It's a terrible idea. So never going to do that again. Terrible purchase. Learned my lesson and now I've gone back to the basics. And when I say basics, that's not necessarily true. I've had these roughwear packs for a while. Um, I got the first generation of this roughwear pack. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and I also have the second generation. This, I uh, believe, is the uh, uh, yeah, this is the second generation, um, and you can tell why. So, anyways, these roughwear packs, if you notice, compared to the other packs, and these are pretty beat up because I've used them a lot. These dogs have carried a lot of loads to a lot of different places, um, which is why I decided originally to try a different pack. But, um, so the, this is the first generation of this pack. Uh, they made some upgrades to it, uh, added some exterior pockets up here, and, uh, uh, change kind of some of the buckles. If you notice, um, I think Rio at one point got sick of wearing the pack and tried to chew this. I repaired it with some duct tape. It's fine. It'd be all right. It's, it's okay. It really is okay. Hawk can't tell the difference. So, um, Hawk being slighter frame, these dogs carry their own food. Uh, primarily is the most weight they've got in here. Um, and so, this is Hawk's pack. He's wearing the uh, Generation 1 pack. Uh, it's a little lighter weight, and the reason why it's a little lighter weight is because I've just got it loaded less. So inside the pack, I've got individual meals worth of food for two dogs. This is about three cups of high-protein food um, that I'll split between the dogs per meal. I'll get fed twice a day. Um, so each one of these is just about a pound. Hawk's carrying four of these total, two on this side, two on the other side. The thing about these packs is you want to keep balanced load, so two on this side, got two pounds on this side, and then he's got some backup uh, first aid gear for the dogs themselves, a roll of duct tape. It's a self-adhesive wrap. Uh, it's also bright orange, so in the event that I feel like they're not visible enough, I can strap some of this on them uh, and use it so it's kind of dual purpose. And then some uh, antibiotic ointment in case they get cuts. So that's all he's got in that side. And at this side, he's obviously got another two pack of food. He's got his collapsible bowl. Again, this is a roughwear collapsible bowl. 
These things are the best. Got to have them. They weigh nothing or next to nothing. And I also have a couple of Ruckwear's um, booties. Now, they probably won't use these booties or need these booties, but in the event that one of them slices a pad, I'll have a booty for the eight legs that are going on this trip. I'll have two booties. So hopefully we don't need any of them, but we've got them as a backup. The other big thing you'll notice about these packs is, is that they're aerodynamic. Um, I don't know that that's the right word, but they're, they're set up this going forward. So the zippers, quit, go. They're set up so that they're more narrow at the back and wider at the front so that stuff slides off of them. I assume that's the, the rationale behind that. And also the zippers are all set to the back. So when that package, when the pack is closed, the zipper is zipped to the back. What that means is when the dog's running forward, he can't accidentally open the zipper. So uh, never had a problem of losing a load from one of the dogs running free in a Ruffler pack. Again, this is generation one. It's been through a lot. I can't tell you how many miles this pack has had on it. It still works just fine. This is the gen one approach pack. They're more expensive than some packs you can find online or other places. I can tell you that they're worth every penny. Um, this happens to be the uh, Gen 2, I think. They may even be on a newer version of the, this pack. Um, this one is Ida's pack. She's going to run with this pack. Um, I've got it loaded a little heavier because, again, as you can see, she's a bit sturdier. So in Ida's pack, she's going to be carrying three meals per side. Don't. Again, that, so that's a total of... Kids. That's a total of... Um, she's got six pounds of food on her. Uh, of course, she's going to carry her own bowl as well on this side. Again, that's a rough wear collapsible bowl. You've got to have it. And then in th this pack, go. In this pack, which she's got these extra little um, pockets up here. Uh, I just got a little uh, super glue. If you guys have never had to use super glue to suture something, that's either for yourself or your dog, put some in that, that you can use as an emergency su suture. In case your dog cuts itself, you can super glue something shut. You want to make sure it's flush and clean, etc., etc. You can do it for yourself as well if you cut yourself. Um, and then on this side, we just have um, some carpropen. Uh, just a few tablets in case one of the dogs gets super sore. And the first aid gear within my own pack, I've got other first aid equipment that I can use for them, including a dose of antibiotics I carry for the dogs. It can also be used for me. Um, in the event that one of us gets cut or some kind of infection, we can start treating it while we're out back. So those are the rough wear packs worth every cent. The dogs are ready to go, as you can see. Ida wants me to strap it on and send her right now. Um, but we'll uh, have a bit of a road trip before we get to that. If you want to check out what's in my pack, the video for that's right here. Uh, of course, uh, like, follow, subscribe, comment if we haven't thought of anything, uh, or if you do things different, love to hear. Um, but uh, we're excited to get the season started, and uh, it's just a few days out.